Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where we talk about autonomous cars and how we build it using simulators. Today uh, it's a very quick video, video about number of images that you have to deal with. So in recently I've been training the model using generated images, um, images that created in a simulator. So at some point I was starting to run out of RAM because you saw my previous code just loads all images and that goes into dot feed um, method of uh, training neural net and that that's when it chokes because the RAM becomes uh, too small to fit all images in memory okay so how do we deal with this <clears throat> because we can now ask questions to chat GPT that was the quickest way I just uh, fire up a question and I was in researching before and I was hearing back that I needed to use generators and I go generators what um, but I was sort of getting confused because uh, generators uh, intuitively you could you could sort of understand it's like someone will generate images for you no it's not it was actually using um, the concept in Python and obviously we we dealing here with um, Keras and TensorFlow uh, framework for neural nets. So this probably doesn't apply. Something similar would exist in PyTorch, I'm pretty sure. But PyTorch I found very inconvenient to use natively. So I love Keras. That's why the ease of interface in Keras is just makes everything for me. So this is obviously about Keras. So back to Python. Python has this um, generator concept, which kind of uh, avoids creating a lot of things in memory and just uh, creates this sort of iterative way of picking a few examples at the time. So the the main function that we define here, as you can see, it's called custom data generator. And um, its key is it's using this yield keyword as opposed to using normal return like for any other function and what does that means it <clears throat> that's what it allows python to just iteratively go through all the instances of whatever it's going through like um, in this case it goes through images in some cases it could be something else but we're talking about computer vision here it's only images and it's also quite specific for because in the simulator we normally create images and store it locally on our hard drive and this example you've got here is what lets you deal with it because sometimes images are download, downloaded from the internet and um, in this case we're just using them from the hard drive because we've got previous step where we generate images to start with okay so um, we also have utility function here that um, contain may contain some pre-processing and as, as you can see Keras has got some convenient features like for example uh, it can resize an image and here we um, we defined our constants of height and width of the image and then image size is defined it's like a tuple of those two so and we feed that tuple into into this and we have target size and um, you know we essentially do not change it but we we if we wanted to we would change it we also convert image to an array which is a required step for neural nets because everything has to be an array but then the main logic uh, happens here so obviously this little function is used here at the bottom uh, to pre-process that image so you can actually incorporate some more steps but when you go back through the main loop uh, of the generator <coughs> because it creates a batch of everything it's paramount that everything is lined up so obviously it gets an image and, uh, in our case we're using a second input not just an image and that's what allows us to the using the square brackets allows us to say our input into the model is a pair so we've got an image and we've got an integer number that represents where we uh, intended direction here like left left straight or right minus one zero or one and that's what we're feeding in combination with each image as well 
And then at the end, we've got our label of what steering angle we're trying to predict or we're training the model uh, to predict. And then obviously, whatever, wherever those um, numbers or images are coming from, everything needs to happen within this loop. So this loop essentially goes through the list of files uh, that defines each image. And as you know, in our images, we, we actually, um, like if we look at the name, this this example is got a timestamp, this long number, but then it says our intentional uh, direction here is to go left minus one, and the angle that we're trying to predict here is minus 45 degrees. So, so obviously this is a lane change situation. That's why it's, um, it has those numbers for this photo here. So, uh, and that's when in here, we need to get all of those numbers from, from those files. So we get a label from uh, of 40, whatever, five degrees to the left from the file name, because it's there. It's after the, after the second instance of the underscore, just before the um, ex file extension. Then we also get our second input at minus one, the, the left intention um, from here, which is uh, after first underscore. Uh, of the file name and obviously the image itself we um, we we get from the 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 file itself okay or the contents of the file and then as we go through these things we're essentially just extending or populating lists of all of these three and then when we're ready to provide it for a one batch which we define you know batch size in this case is 32 and that batch size will be consistently used in the training of the model as well. So um, if I can turn off this caps lock, uh, boom. We also do all the conversion to um, zero and one in here, like uh, we're doing with images. We also need uh, to express all steering angles for the label in zero to one as opposed to uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so all of that is happening here. And then when it comes to using these functions, you you get, you read the file list from wherever it's located. And then important thing that you always have to consider is before splitting your uh, data set into training and validation, you have to randomize it. So, you know, the split into 80% of this and the remaining 20% uh, for validation, which is what happens here, um, that gets applied to a randomized list of images because, you know, everything has to be random. And this is where you need to use that, or you get to use the generator. You assign it to this uh, object that becomes your iterator in, in this dot fit method. So you define train uh, generator, which is your function that you defined above, but it goes off train files, which is defined here, and then validation files, which is the remaining 20% of your data set. And then those two go can go directly into keras.fit method. Um, and that's the ease of it. Or there used to be a separate fit dot generator or generator dot feed in Keras, but now it's all handled by the same dot feed. So you can actually use generators instead of your complete data sets. And that's uh, probably when it should start making sense, right? So instead of using the entire data set that obviously wouldn't fit in RAM, we define this as a function that can iteratively go through the entire list of your images on your hard drive. Then obviously the validation generator is used here when we define validation data. And all of these are uh, like a standard parameters to dot fit function in Keras. Okay. Uh, you also, <clears throat> because you don't express the entire data set here, like you, you let Keras calculate um, parameters of how long it will take to process everything by providing these parameters here. Like the epochs is a uh, standard one, but these sort of steps per epoch and validation steps, is, uh, you have to calculate. Otherwise, when it goes into training, uh, like all of this progress bar is uh, cannot be calculated. By providing those length in the dot fit method, it is what allows you to see the 
ETA and progress calculated more precisely. Okay, so that's essentially it. Uh, everything still quite manageable. The script is quite tidy. I would say the number of changes is minimum. The the only other thing I should notice is in relation to GPU. So if I use if I use this resolution of images, so uh, it actually runs very fast because it uses it can use GPU. But as soon as I change it back to like 320 and 640 here, I, I get an error which um, when my GPU, which is I think mine is 3070 Ti graphics card, and it runs out of memory. So uh, I have to unfortunately still use this lowest. Uh, kind of lower resolution, but otherwise it runs a lot faster now, okay? And it's not running out of RAM. If I want to go back to high resolution, I'll probably have to switch uh, GPU off, which I've done before, um, you saw me in my previous videos, and that's when I can go into high resolution. So if I want to, you know, recognize traffic lights and that kind of stuff, I will have to go and use high resolution images. Okay, that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!